because I can't stick with a metaphor. <laughs> Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the last arc in the East Blue saga, which is the first saga in One Piece. Now, <laughs> I'm so excited about digging into this with you all. It's It was a delightful way to end sort of epic journey um, and for many of you you've told me the prologue of One Piece and so I'm really excited to dig in and yeah I don't, I don't know so let, let's just actually get into it however I will say if you are new to my channel and you um, find yourself enjoying this video right now I am very closely documenting my journey through One Piece which is a long-standing manga that has been going on for the better part of 20 years. I've been reading it and I've been talking about it and it's been great. So if you're really into that or you're into books and reading in general, which is also my gig, I would encourage you to subscribe. Y'all should like the video, please. I mean, not should. No, Did I just should on people? No. Like the video if you want to like the video. Please subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And without any further awkwardness or rambling on, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. The first thing that I have been really delighted by is the whole, the new cover art. <laughs> the new cover story. I don't know what they're called, but the, the the covers have their own story going on. And so right now we are following Helmeppo and his father, who is Axan Morgan. I almost forgot that. And Kobe. And poor Helmeppo is like, I mean, he is just really so sad and pathetic in, in these sh stories. He's like always crying. <laughs> he's He's got like no agency, the poor guy. Um, and that's been a really, I didn't even talk about the order of events and I've just, I just dove right in to this saga or this arc. So I actually don't know, but I'm just going to say it one time. It's the town that we visit is a uh, rogue town, but this is called Logue town. And I, I don't know why. So I'm confused as to why the arc is named the way that it is. I would love for you to share, um, down below whether you know, wh why this town is L-O-G-U-E town arc rather than rogue town, which is what the town is called that they visit in this arc. I do want to touch on, hopefully I'll have chapters to navigate because I feel like I'm all over the place already. I do want to quickly kind of talk about the Arlong Park arc and some of my thoughts. Um, so what happens is that I read, I sort of read the one piece in a bubble. I don't talk to anyone about it. I mean, I talk to, I'll talk to my husband about it. I'll talk to some friends about it, but nobody, and, and I'll talk to Vinny about it, <laughs> but not in typically my thoughts. Vinny is the, the wonderful, amazing person who's helping me with pronunciation. And, um, and I'll talk to, I'll talk in sort of vague terms, like how it's maybe going or if I have questions about pronunciation, but I, I sort of read it in a vacuum in, in a bubble. I don't really talk to anybody in my real life or even online about how the experience is going. I sit down and I really give you all my, my raw thoughts. <laughs> and, and then what happens is that, you know, I put the video together, edit it, put it up, and then it's out in the world. And then you all are so incredible because you come out and co make, you know, you comment. And there's this <clears throat> experience of recontextualizing my read and what I got out of it in isolation. And then all of a sudden what I'm getting out of it in sort of reliving the experience with you. It's very like, it's not an echo, the echo chamber is not the right thing, but in some ways it's almost like a mirror of a mirror where you can see sort of endlessly. And that's what the experience is. It's like the original mirror is me reading it. And then I, you all put up a mirror of like my reaction to it. And then I react to your comments. And sometimes you all react back. And it's kind of this wonderful ping pong back and forth mirror like thing if because I can't stick with a metaphor. <laughs> I did not know until I had published the video how iconic it was for Nami, like a, an, a truly iconic moment for the One Piece whole story is this really emotional moment that Nami has with Luffy and she says, help me. And a lot of you were so incredible and I just wanted to, you know, it's it's been interesting to recontextualize the read no, knowing this, excuse me, knowing this now, because um, Nami, she looks up, she's in tears, she is brought low, 
Um, Arlong has, it, you know, betrayed her in a lot of ways. The thing that she's been working for so hard has been taken away. We ha we know the backstory, and so many of you all have commented saying that not Luffy doesn't really know the details of her backstory. Maybe he knows it in broad strokes from earlier arcs, but he doesn't know the details of her backstory. And so he he looks at, you know, they look at each other. She, in her tears, says, help me. And he, even not knowing all of her context, and on the, on the, the basis that she asked and that she is his friend, he decides to go in and help her, which is such a beautiful moment. I did not know how iconic it was until I had read all of your comments. So that was really interesting. And then even as I was recounting the story to my husband about this, I, I was like understanding how iconic it was this or how pivotal it was for so many of y'all. And as I was really kind of processing that, I was, you know, sitting with my, with my husband and I was like, my goodness, like, and then I started crying and I was like, it's just so beautiful. He takes this, Luffy takes his hat and he puts it on Nami and she remembers and we know how important, my eyes are like stinging a little bit, even thinking about it. It's like the, the moment has even grown in my heart, even after having read it because I've thought about it so much since I've published the video. So like he takes his hat that means so much to him and that is his symbol of wealth, his symbol, his symbol for a lot of things, a lot of things, inspiration, what he wants to do with his life. He takes it, his greatest possession for all of these reasons, he puts it on Nami and he marches away and he does it because he is her friend and it was just so beautiful. And so I, I really just wanted to, you know, go back and say that I've just thought about that moment a lot and I've continued to process that moment. And, um, you know, y'all are just so sweet, you know, to fill me in that like Luffy does it with, without having the investment that we even have as readers because he doesn't know her backstory and he, he just does it because he's like, Luffy is Luffy. He's this emotionally intelligent person who is understanding what someone needs in that moment. And so I thought that was really a beautiful moment. You probably all hear my dog barking. <laughs> so he's, I don't know what's going on over there. Oh, and going back to the help me scene, I did watch from the anime, the actual help me scene. It was really good. I think that it would have been more impactful if I saw it, the scene in context, having, if I had watched the anime up to that point, but it kind of felt like I was sort of it was like jumping into icy cold water where I just wasn't used to the voice actors and the musical moments, but I could I could appreciate it again, sort of in a bubble, having watched that moment out of context, out of the context of the anime, but just having watched it and then like the music starts and, and it, you know, and we're like off to the races with these final battles and we're going to see who wins and, um, and all of that. So at the beginning of this arc, we are, plunged in, we're, we're, we're in with our, our peeps, you know, we have Nami, Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, um, Luffy, everyone's there, they're on the crew, and one of the things that I like is just their, their friendship and the banter that they have. Um, Usopp is, again, you know, as re representation of somebody who doesn't have these magical powers, <laughs> who's, who's really like the everyday guy, you know, the everyday person. Um, he's trying to develop a hot sauce to sting people's eyes, and then he ends up getting it in his own eyes. I thought it was really cool that we get um, we get a nod to uh, Nami's background in a lot of ways. Um, it, we get we get a, a symbol, something that was important to her that is now on the ship, the Merry Go. So we see that she has taken three three trees tangerine trees that mean a lot to her and she has them on the ship now with her um you know of course Sanji's up to his old you know his his little habits and he's like I'll protect your trees for you Nami <laughs> and then Zoro's like she's got him wrapped around her finger and it was like but Sanji is like helpless and hopeless around all beautiful women so I mean it doesn't have to be her the greatest development though is definitely that the marines 
are, um, they have officially made Luffy as somebody who is mo most wanted. And so we get the most wanted posters and we have Buggy the Clown and Don Krieg and then Sawtooth, Arlong, and they're all like 17 million berries and 15 million berries and actually they're in the order in which we met them too. So it's like Buggy, 15 million berries, Don Krieg, 17 million berries, Arlong, 20 million berries, and Luffy with his cute little cheesy smile. <laughs> he's like, he's worth 30 million berries because he has defeated all of the bad guys before, you know, all of our antagonists that we see before. And so it's just, I mean, it's so fun and he's just, its it's got a nod to lightness and laughter because Luffy's got his cheesy little smile on his wanted poster. The world building continues in so many different ways and in this arc and I really love that Oda doesn't really miss a beat to build the world. And so we are with the Marines a little bit, like in isolation where they're talking about how Luffy's now a most wanted pirate. We also get this this marine barking, uh, this is the stronghold of liberty. In this age of pirates, no weakness is permitted. And he's saying that to his subordinates. And it's this nice dichotomy of, um, or contrast between Luffy who is, you know, we see his weaknesses. We see when he needs to rely on his friends. I mean, gosh, like when, like for me, an iconic moment in the last arc was when he was saying, like, I can't do the, I, I can't wield a sword. I don't thieve from pirates. I, I can't tell a lie, or I, you know, I'm unable to tell, a, spin a good story. But um, I, I rely on people, and they rely on me. And it's just you, you go from that to like this stern marine moment, and you see how just. <laughs> like the harshness of that and what contrast that has and I feel like it's really building a nice a nice tension in the story also we um we're just seeing like in this arc I feel like he like Oda's bringing everyone together because we see Hawkeye um which I'm like oh Hawkeye me Hawk and then we also see red haired Shanks red haired Shanks comes back up again and I'm like what <laughs> What? I did not think that we would see you again. I mean, I didn't not not think that we were going to see him again, but I was like really shocked to see that he was there again. Oh, one of the major themes in this arc, in this arc is that of fate, fate and destiny. Like, is it someone's dream? Do they have control over their own fate? Or was it one's destiny to do things? We see that in a conversation that the mayor has with um, a young lady. The mayor says, a pirate's a pirate. And then the young lady responds with, but it was his dream. Are you worried? And they're talking about Luffy. It's, we're in the windmill village and they're talking about Luffy. You know, are you worried his dream or his destiny? And I always find it really fascinating with whenever destiny is discussed because the idea of fate and choice, free, you know, free will or plan des destinies who is in control, all of this, um, all of these concepts. Um, we, we've been thinking about this since the dawn of writing. <laughs> like, you know, some of the most, some of the ancient, most ancient texts, like the Iliad and the Odyssey. Um, I read Oedipus the King last year, and it was literally all about, can we escape our fates? Or why do bad things happen to good people? Perhaps those bad things were fated um, for that person, and fate is inex inescapable. And so it's really interesting to see the way that Oda is playing with those themes, but it was definitely the biggest theme in the story. It was really cool to see everybody at this village, the rogue town, because, you know, we see Nami all dressed up. We see her in different outfits. I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a fashion-y person at heart. I'm a fashionista at heart. I feel like that's a really old term and really aging myself. Um, so seeing her all dressed up in different outfits and... I really thought some of you all have pointed out to me that Nami equates safe money and safety as one thing. That the more money she has, the more secure she is in her life and what she's doing. Um, and so it was just really neat to see, you know, the way she's spending her money. Everyone at this village is kind of trying to find, everyone in the main crew, I would say, is trying to find their own thing. Probably, maybe not Usopp, but... You know, there's the the scaffold, I think it is, that Luffy wants to see because that's where Roger was executed. Um, <laughs> Zoro wants to replace his swords. 
Sanji wants um, some food to cook. Nami wants to spend some of her money on some new outfits. And I thought, again, it was just this development of the world and it wasn't just like a light fluffy arc. I mean, there were things that really contributed to the overall story. So I thought it was also interesting that now we're getting this legacy of different swords and how swords have, it's all, it reminded me to be honest of you of like Harry Potter and the wand, the wands. I think that's like a trope in fantasy to have something that is connected with something else like the wand and then it's like sister wand or like a connected wand that was made from like the same branch or the same tree or the same person maybe the same craftsman is like passed down and so it has like some of that magic or that legacy in the wand we're seeing that same thing with the swords and so you know um Zoro comes across a sword, it's, you know, supposedly it's evil, it's connected with other swords, and it's growing, like, again, it's this world building, it's, it's growing the narrative, it's making things more complex, and um, along the way, he meets, what is her name? I will come across her name, I'm sure, in the future, in just, like, a few minutes, um, but anyway, so he meets this woman that looks like and speaks like and has a similar attitude Zoro does to the the friend in childhood who wished well didn't wish but she understood how lucky Zoro was to be a boy to be able to have the freedom to fight she always whipped his tail though you know this childhood friend and then she pass she passes and in a lot of ways that's what inspires Zoro to keep going it's this um, legacy of their friendship and that he always lost to her that he wants to be the greatest swordsman ever and he meets this woman in this town and she speaks like his friend she acts like his friend and so it's this it's a it's strange it's um it's this I don't know it's this reference to like his past and the connection to his past so he's feeling immediately very connected to this woman um, because she just so clearly reminds him of this friend that he had lost and that was so inspiring and in so, so much integrated into part of his story. So, you know, he, he ends up getting his three swords. What is her name? That's like really bugging me. Luffy is so funny. He like is standing on top of the, <laughs> on top of this like scaffold and he's looking out and it's it's so interesting. I mean, you know, for people who are fanatics of other things like the Tudors or, you know, the ancients, it's like, oh, you know, or even um, those who seek to walk a similar path as Jesus or to visit um, ancient civilizations and cultures. When you go through these moments, you're like, oh, but so-and-so walked this same path. Oh, but so-and-so saw this same thing. This is what they saw when they stood on this mount, when they won this thing. You know, it's like these connections, you know, the connections to our past. Maybe that's another theme. And so Luffy's standing up there and he's like, wow, this is what the King of the Pirates saw just before he died. And he's looking out and he's in amazement. And then what do you know? There's this beautiful woman and she interrupts everything. She's wearing this cowboy hat. I am shocked that I didn't recognize her. She has eaten, although they don't really get into her powers, but she has eaten the, um, well, it's Lady um, Alvida. Um, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I did not expect to see her again. I mean, I did not not expect to see her again, but I here, here she is. She has eaten the gum gum fruit. She has transformed. And I thought it was funny that there was like a nod to her transformation. She's like, yes, I think I have less freckles, but clearly she has a full transformation, like a full transformation. She looks totally different than her former self. I wonder why Oda decided to change her. I don't know. But anyway, so she's totally different now. She's got the power of the gum gum, gum fruit. She's the woman that Buggy has decided to pair up with. We get a little nod to him. We see his little face and his hood and um and there and then he like reveals himself and he is like ready ready to fight and I was like Buggy's back I'm so excited <laughs> like fangirl style about Buggy which is so nerdy but you know like my bushy Buggy is I just have a soft spot for him all right I just have a soft spot for him also Buggy's crew members are back um we are just 
<laughs> Luffy ends up getting captured and um, and then we also have like another like nemesis again a lot of world building because we didn't see a lot of fighting but we have a uh, white chase smoker um, captain Navy headquarters and it is this uh, two cigar two cigars in his mouth kind of guy he obviously is a leader of the Navy um, I think at this town at this port at this small village and so we have now these you know, we have all these people after Luffy. We have Lady Alvita, we have Buggy, we have, what is his name? White Chase, White Chase Smoker. And interestingly, you know, he's not, it's the, again, these little moments where you're like, it's a nod to that person's character. It's a, re, it reveals more about that person. So White Chase Smoker bumps into a little girl who has a three scoop ice cream cone, and then he ends up giving her money so that she doesn't have to live without her ice cream cone. And easily that story could have been twisted and he could have been like more evil if he would have just like bumped into her and was like, watch out where you're going kid. And then walks on and the girl's in tears, right? It would have just played, it would have revealed something different about him. But instead he's like, here's some money, get yourself five scoops next time. Um, and then we realize that the woman that Zoro is like impressed by and is a reminder of his childhood friend, um, that she is, I got it, ta Tashiji. <laughs> I hope that's right, Tashiji, and uh, that she is also like a chief, a master chief petty officer for the Navy headquarters. So Tashiji is there, she's got, you know, an outfit, so it's like revealed where she fits in the story, which I love, and then, ah, and then the fate thing really comes together. It all comes together, because Luffy is captured, he is, again, in a Buggy can really get Luffy. I don't know if it's because they both have gum gum powers, but Buggy can really get Luffy into a situation that he can't get out of. So he's in what, like shackles? Not shackles. He's in where his, he's in the thing. I can't remember what it's called, but it looks like something that like the guillotine would come and chop the head off. Buggy is caught. He's got his hands and head all, you know, caught up. And, and you know, what's funny is that at one point, at one point, but um, Luffy is like, I want to scratch my nose. And I'm like, can't you just get your fingers to stretch? But maybe only his limbs stretch and neck, like his neck and limbs stretch. But I was like, can't you just like stretch your finger to scratch your nose? Um, or maybe he didn't think of it. I don't know. Um, so he's in, you know, he's all caught up um, in, I forget what they're called, but um, he's all stuck. And Buggy is ready to execute Luffy the same way that Luffy's hero was executed. And it's like, they're gonna commence with the execution. Um, the guy, the guy who's the tiger, I forget his name. He's, he's sent to go burn the ship down. He's like on his own mission. He's on his own lion thing that looks like a motorcycle. He's going to burn the ship down. Um, and then this moment, this like incredible moment happens in which Luffy accepts his fate. He's like, I'm going to like, I, I mean, he doesn't say it, but he's like, ex he doesn't fight the fact that he is about to die. We also know, we as the readers know that the ship is going to be burned down and what he does is he says, I am going to be the king of the pirates. And then, you know, we, we have this moment where Buggy has the, the sword and he's about to slice off Luffy's head. And instead of like a moment of terror or frustration or I don't know, um, horror, Luffy is smiling. And even our um, naval officer is like, he smiled, he laughed. And then at that moment, there's like a crack of lightning and Luffy is saved by fate. Um, he had accepted his fate and he is totally saved, which is just amazing. And it's like this hand of, this, ha this, this hand of, I don't know, a higher power, a high, like uh, it's, it's like it all comes together and Luffy is 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 free to go and he's you know on the run and even Sanji like and and, and Zoro in their commentary they say do, he's like do you believe and then it rains you know so their ship doesn't get burned down and he's like do you believe in a higher power and um Zoro that's what Sanji says and Zoro says don't talk don't talk nonsense let's get out of here so it's like was it God was it fate who knows um, and then, you know, he goes on, on the run for it. I just, I mean, it was so cool. It was such a cool moment. Um, yeah, Gold Roger. Yeah, Gold Roger was the one that was, I, I was just like, I know his name's Roger. Can't remember what color it was beforehand, but I know it was Roger. The naval officer, he says, did you ever see a pirate laugh right before his execution? 
laugh when faced with certain death. Every man trembles in fear, however tough he is. And then, you know, the naval officer says, well, that monkey laughed. 22 years ago, another man laughed on that very spot. He was Gold Roger, King of the Pirates. Uh, so I thought that was just, I thought that was so cool. And then we have this legendary person. Um, I, I don't know who he is. He's got markings on his face. Um, <laughs> the uh, sort of like cuckoo's banana, bananas crazy off the rails stuff continues. Um, his The chop chop motor, you know, buggy's motor. That was something else. And uh, a slip slip tracks. Oh yeah, because Alveda's power is slip slip for she slips up. I don't really know what it does. She can slip inside. I don't know. But she's, you know, she's she's a whole new woman, all right? And um <laughs> and and then um the naval officer with the two cigars, he ends up capturing Buggy and Alvita and uh you know, cuz he, he has stuff that can do that. And <laughs> the ship doesn't burn another moment of of fate. Oh yeah, and then Zoro Zoro confronts the woman who reminds him of his childhood friend and you know I think he it's kind of like he speaks his truth that sounds very modern of me to say but you know he speaks his truth with her you remind me of a friend um and then there's this you who the government got your head blah, blah, blah. yeah the guy with the marking on his face I don't really understand who that is am I supposed to know who that is did I miss something sometimes I do you know it's all it's all right um, so now they see the, you know, so every, they, they escape Luffy with his life, Buggy and Alvita are caught by the Navy officers. There is now this new person on the scene. I don't know who he is. He's got the markings on the face. We, you know, people are around. I'm just like, what in the world? And then, um, and then, you know, they escape, the, the crew escapes, which is awesome. And they see a, um, a lighthouse that is the entrance to the Grand Line. And so, you know, they kind of like, are we gonna do this? Are we gonna, are we gonna go to the Grand Line? Is it gonna happen? Is it, is it happening? And we get this nice closure for the East Blue because, um, you know, Sanji goes, I'm gonna find the All Blue. And Luffy says, I'm gonna be the King of the Pirates. And Zoro says, I'm gonna be the greatest swords, the world's greatest swordsman. And Nami says, I'm gonna draw a map of the world. <laughs> and Usopp says, I'm going to become a brave warrior of the sea. And they all put their feet in, not their hands in, which is interesting. It's okay, we like a little quirk. And they all put their feet in as like, kind of like, you know, you put your hands in and you break and you say, go. But instead they put their feet in and they all scream, grand line, here we come. Sort of solidifying their um, commitment to their mission and their commitment to what they're, what they're all about, both individually and as a team, right? That was like the first time it's like they all spoke what was most important to them as individuals, but also solidifying the fact that they're a team and they're working together for um, a common goal um, for for each one of them to accomplish their missions. So it was great. It was really good. I really enjoyed this arc as short as it was. It was nice to see everyone again to have a little setup for the next arc and to have a little bit of like closure but curiosity. I don't know. It was a good it was a good spot to end on. So I'm really glad about that. Let me know what y'all thought. I am so curious as to what the next saga is going to be like, the next arc. Um yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I have to run. I actually have to go. We're going somewhere. Um but yeah, thank you just I'm ever so grateful for you to spend this time with me. And um, yeah, I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.